Okay, to begin this analysis, uh, opened a new part, created a sketch in the front plane, and uh, see we just have three lines to define the uh, uh, axes of our three uh, members, and equal relations between the two verticals so that they're both 72 inches long. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and exit that sketch. To use beam elements in SOLIDWORKS, we end up uh, inserting structural members, so underwhelment structural member. And here we have some standard shapes to pick from. There's not a whole lot there, but, but there is the square tube that we're interested in, 4 inch by 4 inch by a quarter inch thickness. Now I'm going to click on the two vertical members to apply to those. Now I can't select the horizontal member yet until I go new group and then pick on that one. And so you can see when I did that, the reason I have to do it in uh, or why the order makes a difference is in how the joints are created. Now, uh, the exact way that the joints are created are not important from the analysis standpoint, just if we wanted to detail uh, exactly how those steel members uh, were going to be. So there's our, our geometry. Um, there is, I'm not going to, my computer runs really slow, so I'm not going to show you, but underneath the structural members, if you go under there, there's a sketch that defines the cross-section and you can go in and edit that sketch if you want to define custom properties of that cross-section. Uh, let's go ahead and specify a material and I've added ASTM A36 uh, to the favorites here so I'm just going to click on that and now we're ready to start the analysis. So under tools and add-ins I've uh, started the uh, simulation add-in and as you can see I've got a uh, new group right here and a new group in the command manager. Let's go to study and create a new static analysis. And you can see automatically that there are joints created because these structural member uh, members uh, by default do make beam elements. So we can only apply uh, we can apply loads and um, boundary conditions to these joints. Alright, let me um, Go in here and let's uh, go to fixtures, right click, fix geometry, and I'm going to click on these two joints. And now let's add the load, right click, force. Let me zoom in on this top joint here. I want to, um, for my selection, let's specify joints. I'm going to click on this joint. And now I have to define uh, direction. So I'm going to click here and just pick this uh, any uh, horizontal edge will work. And under force, let's put in our 1,000 pounds. Okay. Now it's hard to uh, to see, but if I click on reverse direction and rotate this around a little bit, you can see that the arrow is in the direction that we want it. You can go over here to symbol settings and uh, make that arrow a lot larger if you want to, but everything's going the way we want it now. And that's really all we have to do. You don't really have to mesh this. The mesh will, uh, will be done automatically. So we just click Run. And here are our results. Now, what comes up here is, uh, because again we're using beam elements, is not a, uh, a von Mises but rather, I'm going to go to the front view here, but rather my choices here are that I can pick just the axial load or just the bending in each direction. But if you pick upper bound axial plus bending, that's really what we want here. And also if I click on this render beam profile, it says it slows it down a little bit. But what that'll do is to um, to show you not just the the maximum but also show you the areas where we're in tension or in compression so it makes sense tension on these sides compression on those sides and we see the uh, uh, the value here of about 5170 as being our axial which compares pretty well to the hand calculations you also see that the deflected shape looks about what we thought it would in that uh, we end up with a curved member up here and again these sort of like um, 
look like a cantilever beam, but there is some resistance here, and so some reverse curvature uh, right there. Now, before we lose, leave this, let me do one more thing. Let's just duplicate this study. And what I want to do for this one, if I go and look at the each of our members, each solid body, you can see that this one, um, this solid body represents the top member. If I right click that and hit edit definition, you can see by default it's a beam. If I make this a truss instead, then it's just like having pin joints up here. Let's run that. And you see how the, what the deflection looks like. Now it's like you do have uh, essentially two cantilever beams that are connected by this one which will only take the uh, axial load and you can see that the uh, the maximum uh, bending plus axial is up to uh, 8770 uh, PSI down here.